The next important aspect is surfactant therapy. So you can review the video I posted recently on the pragmatic approach to RDS management and that covers most of these parts. I mean, even though it was before the guideline came up, most of it would agree with what is mentioned in the guideline. If a premature baby less than 30 weeks gestation requires intubation for stabilization, they should be given surfactant. So that is well agreed. These babies have already been intubated and very high risk of RDS. So the earlier you give surfactant, the better. So you can give surfactant to these babies. And babies with RDS needing treatment should be given animal derived surfactant preparation. At the moment, we don't have a synthetic surfactant which is marketed uh, with appropriate evidence, even though we are likely to get something in the pipeline soon. Leucine actant has been withdrawn from the market, so we have to wait for the next product. LISA is the preferred method of surfactant administration. So this is based on recent evidence. Again, I have just published another video looking at the non-invasive ways of surfactant administration and either LISA or Insure can be used according to what your unit practices. The guideline is suggesting LISA uh, as a preferred method. Uh, laryngeal mass surfactant may be used for more mature infants, more than one kilo. So uh, again, I've discussed that in the other video, I'll refer you to that. So don't be fixated on which non-invasive way. The main uh, aspect which is going to damage the lung for risk of BPD is prolonged ventilation. So as long as you're not intubating and keeping the baby intubated for a long time, you can use whatever suits you best. I have used Insure mainly in our unit and it works quite well. In practice, the BPD rates are lower than what is reported elsewhere. Uh, for poractant alpha, we all use a 200 milligram per kilo uh, higher dose, initial dose, because it has shown a reduced need for further surfactant as well as improved survival. For uh, B-ractant, uh, you use 100 milligram per kilogram. If you're using a second dose, you go to 100 per kilo for poractant as well. The rescue surfactant should be given early in the course of the disease. So. Some of you had discussed the need for IPPV, NIPPV versus CPAP in the initial stage. So we restrict to CPAP of a pressure uh, 6 to 8 centimeter of water or FAO2 up to 30. And if the baby doesn't cope with it, it's better to give surfactant to these babies as it's likely RDS. And you don't want to use a high pressure on a lung which has significant RDS. A higher risk of air leak will ensure and the higher pressure used may not be good for the baby's tummy. A higher risk of SIP possibly is there. So if the lung ultrasound uh, suggests you can decide on the surfactant and please, as I've discussed in the video on the pragmatic approach, remember that all of these, the FIO2, RDS risk and uh, the findings on X-ray are variable. It's an evolving disease, so you need to be careful about it. A second and occasional third dose of surfactant should be given if there is ongoing evidence of RDS, like persistent high oxygen requirement after other problems have been excluded. So. Most of the time we don't need more than two doses. I have not needed a third dose recently. And even the second dose is very infrequently needed these days. If you have used uh, non less invasive surfactant for the first dose, you can use it for the second dose if the baby is coping otherwise. There are some indications where you want to keep the baby intubated if the CO2 is very high, if the baby's work of breathing is very significantly abnormal, or uh, there is a risk of PPHN or infection, you can have a lower threshold to uh, keep the tube in for a few hours to decide on the subsequent course to avoid repeated intubation efforts. So this is a summary of uh, what we have for surfactant therapy.